My name is Fernando Ruiz. I'm the director of the Design and Technology Academy here at Ed White. Uh, one of the great things about being part of the NEISD family is that there are some fantastic choices for you as you decide where your students are going to pursue their middle school careers. Uh, one of the great options that we have in NEISD are our fantastic magnet programs. And I'm here tonight to talk to you about the Design and Technology Academy. Um, our presentation tonight, we have a great presentation ready for you. Uh, during that presentation, there is a chat bar in your uh, YouTube live, live stream. You can post any questions there. Uh, I have moderators, uh, teachers, and student ambassadors posted who will help answer those questions. And then any questions that aren't answered at the end, I will come back and answer during a Q&A session. So with that said, let's get started with our presentation. I hope you enjoy the evening. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. And thank you for choosing NEISD. Welcome fifth grade parents. We're very happy that you joined us tonight for our very first ever YouTube live video uh, recruitment series. Uh, we're here to talk to you today about your student's future. As amazing as it may seem, the elementary years are quickly fading into the background and it's time to start thinking about your student's future in middle school, in high school, and beyond, and the kind of future that we want our students to live in. Uh, we're very proud of our program at the Design and Technology Academy. Let's start with a short video on some of the things that our students actually do while they're enrolled in our program.
So they get involved with a variety of programs. This is them working with Photoshop to design a book cover, different pictures that they use. They use SketchUp Pro to design 3D graphics that they are then able to render into actual 3D models. They get a lot of uh, 3D animation programming done while they're with us. Uh, these are some of the 3D models designed by our sixth graders in about the sixth week of school. So we get them into it quickly. They also are able to do some Premiere video editing using the same kinds of software that are used by professional studio workers uh, where they're able to insert themselves into movies. They do a lot of motion graphics and animation. They do a lot of vector graphics as well. Uh, this is one of their favorite projects where they are designing their own emoji. They get involved in some game design in our upper division classes where they're actually designing and playing their own video games. We do lots of 3D printing. We have 3D printers at every grade level where they take their ideas and they make the them into reality. We've also added a full design studio. So those are just some of the things that we do here at the Design and Technology Academy at Ed White. Now let's talk about who we are and what we do. What is data? Well we're a magnet program that focuses on three main things, coding, modeling, and visualization. Students can earn at least five and a half high school credits while they matriculate through our program. Our students can earn up to seven and a half credits. That puts them ahead of about 95% of all middle schoolers going into high school. We also align directly with the Design and Technology Academy at Theodore Roosevelt High School, which means if students decide to stay in our program for high school, they don't have to, but if they decide to, if they found their passion, in the digital world, then they have automatic admission into data at, at Roosevelt. They don't have to go through the stress that you're going through now with um, applying and waiting for the lottery pick. Now, here at the Design and Technology Academy, people ask me all the time, what is your vision from the, for this program? What do you really focus on? Well, we focus on inspiring tomorrow's innovators today in a service-oriented community that promotes four main things, critical thinking, communication, creativity, and collaboration. We want them to be able to develop these skills because these are the skills that will make them successful in high school and in college and in the real world be beyond. Some people call these soft skills. We consider them critical skills. It doesn't matter which class a student is in whether it's in math or science or social studies or any of our technology courses. Communication, critical thinking, creativity, and collaboration will be the focus around which we build our instruction. So why would you want to come to a technology academy? Well, the reality is that there are tens of thousands of computing jobs here in Texas that go unfilled every year. Great companies, USAA, Rackspace, um, all of the medical companies that are based here in town, the Cybersecurity Center uh, over at Lackland Air Force Base, all of these great employers have to recruit outside of Texas to fill the jobs that they have. The average salary here in San Antonio is about $48,965 a year, which isn't too, too bad, but the average salary in these computer-related fields is almost double that, $81,616. And so we're preparing kids for jobs that are not only fun and exciting, but that pay really well. Uh, true story. Um, I was uh, paying a ticket off downtown. Uh, I had let my inspection on my car expire and was taking in the receipt for to get the ticket dismissed. 
I went up, I was uh, dressed in my suit and I had my NEISD badge on. Uh, and when I went up to the judge, th his clerk asked, oh, you're from NEISD, where do you work? Told them that I worked at uh, Data uh, at the Design and Technology Academy. She said, my son graduated from Data High School. And when he got out of high school, one of the local tech companies hired him part time, paid him a really good salary, actually paid him about $60,000 a year for his part time work and also paid for his college uh, based on the skills that he developed while he was at Data High School. So what is the what are the three things that we focus on here at data well coding modeling and visualization coding is that language that we use to make computers do what we want them to do modeling is when we create digital versions of real world or original design objects in the computer and visualization is when we take what we see in our imagination and we're able to render it some way digitally for print or for web use or for video distribution. So by developing these three skills, our kids do some amazing, amazing things. They are able to design their and, and develop their own movies, their own web pages. Uh, in fact, one of our who is uh, one of our students who is now a tenth grader, um, when she left eighth grade, she. Uh, set up her own little online web business designing web pages and she is using that business to save up for college uh, save up money for college and she's doing really well with that um, they design and play their own video games they work with a variety of different computer programs they do 3d prints and animation they even can develop their own mobile smartphone applications that actually run on their phones. The students that we get really enjoy technology and we are loaded with technology at the De Design and Technology Academy. In fact, we have the most technology per student of any program or school in the district. Most uh, middle schools have one or two computer labs for all of their students on campus. For our students, we have six computer labs, in, including a full Mac lab. We think it's important for students to leave us with experience on both PC and, and Mac formats. Um, we have class sets of Chromebooks and iPads in every classroom. We have Android tablets for kids to develop and test their own apps. We have 3D printers at every grade levels. We've supplied our schools with high definition interactive screens. These screens actually hook directly into the computer or the teacher's computer so that they can broadcast what they're having through those screens. We're, we've now added a new green screen broadcast studio, which is actually where I'm broadcasting to you from today. We have a very special thing that we're very proud of. Uh, we've, through the generosity of our parents, we're able to develop our own escape room. Uh, we designated uh, one of the, our, the rooms, in, one of our classrooms as a, an escape room. Students can go in there, they look for clues, uh, they solve uh, puzzles, all related to their honors content that they're taking. They learn in a fun, new, interactive way, and all of our grade levels get to use that escape room. Here's some pictures of our brand new broadcast studio. Um, I figured you'd want to see the studio and not me, so great pictures. Uh, this was made possible through a $20,000 donation from one of our local petroleum companies. Uh, it is a fantastic addition to our program. Now to me, this isn't the best part of who we are. The best part of who we are is that we work together as a family. Students take all of their core classes and their tech classes together as an elective. We have very caring, very knowledgeable teachers who are able to take these very high flying students and move them along further than they ever thought they could go. They do it in a way that supports their social emotional learning. 
the other good thing about our program is that you don't give anything up by coming to a magnet program. Students can sign up for all of the other electives that they would have at a traditional magnet, orchestra, athletics, art, band, choir, theater, arts. You, by coming to the Design and Technology Academy, you have the opportunity to take part in our specialized curriculum, as well as taking part in all of the different things that make middle school fun and exciting for kids. Some of the benefits of joining data, all of our core classes are at the honors level. We don't offer regular instruction, so our kids are really learning um, critical thinking skills and uh, core content at an accelerated pace and an accelerated level. Students automatically gain admission into Roosevelt High School if into the Roosevelt High School data program if they wish to continue. Um, you don't even have to worry about bringing your kids over to Ed White to drop them off. Transportation is provided for all NEISD students to and from their home middle school campus. We have shuttle buses that go to every middle school, pick up students in the morning, bring them over to data, where they take all of their coursework and then return them back to their home campus at the end of the day. Adult supervision at each middle school begins for uh, at about 7 a.m. We've made sure that what we're doing is really aligned with our industry partners. So great companies have helped us develop curriculum and lesson plans for our tech classes that really prepare our kids for career and college readiness. But we also want to make sure that our students are learning in a fun and innovative way. So the student on the upper left hand corner, he's taking a virtual field trip uh, using his uh, Nearpod 3D goggles. Students are learning how a computer works by actually taking it apart. There's a student on the bottom working on those interactive smart boards that we have. Um, Students, yes, are actually writing on that desk in the corner, directly on that desk, sketching out the different parts of a cell. The one on the top uh, right-hand corner is one of my favorites. Those kids are studying speed by doing a lesson on the zombie apocalypse, and they're measuring how fast they would have to be to escape a zombie, which is why you see they're walking kind of funny up there. We also don't want our kids to forget that they're still kids. We have great opportunities for students to become involved uh, and to grow into their voice. Um, we have 22 different clubs and organizations for students to join, and they're not all tech related. We have a gardening club. We have a arts and crafts club. We have a comics books club. We have a debate team. Um, we want kids who come here to get the full middle school experience that helps prepare them to be involved when they get to high school and college and beyond. So what are the qualifications for getting into data? Well, we are going to look at their past STAR exams. We know that last year they did not take STAR, so we'll look at third grade STAR scores uh, for fifth grade students. We'll all, we're also trying to look at uh, the benchmarks that students will be taking in fifth grade since they did not take a fourth grade star at all. They have to have an academic average of at least 85. We will be looking at their report cards. Uh, we will be averaging together their math, their science, their social studies, and their language arts. They do not have to have an 85 in every class when we average together those four core courses, the average of those four has to be an 85. And then we, can't, we have to have students that are gonna follow the student, of con, student code of conduct. We do so many great things in class that I need students who are gonna be in the class and not in my office. So excellent behavior and attendance is a must. It doesn't mean perfect behavior and perfect attendance, just nothing major in their Skyward file. So to apply to our program, it's really easy. You're gonna click on the Schools button 
at the top of the NEISD homepage. Then go to the middle school or magnet button. Scroll down until you find the Design and Technology Academy at white. Make sure you're not clicking the one at Roosevelt. Then go to our webpage and click on the button that says Application Process and simply slip on the application. I do get lots of questions about whether or not there will be shadowing. In a normal year, there is. Uh, we just don't know how it's going to look during this COVID school year. Keep checking our website to uh, for any updates. And you can always call the office to inquire. So parents, you always want to know about academics, and I totally get it. So let's talk about the star scores that we do have. So we're very proud of how our students perform while they are in our program. So last year for our sixth grade, 99% of our kids passed the reading and 100% passed the math. And 53% in reading were at the master's level and 43% at math were at the master's level. For seventh grade, you can see the numbers there for meets and for masters. And for our eighth grade, very comparable scores. In fact, our social studies teacher had the high, second highest scores in the entire district for both pass rate and master's level. Now, the next question that I get about scores is how do they compare to everyone else? Well, that's a really good question. So overall, for our star scores, this is where Texas scores in the number of students who reach approaches level are better. This is the number that are at meets level are better, and this is the number who are at master's level are better. Now, any ISD outperforms the state almost, well, every year, not almost every year, every year. And this is any ISD scores for approaches, meets, and masters. This is where data performed in comparison to any ISD. We're very proud of the job that our teachers and our students do in preparing for the rigorous instruction that's demanded of a master's or of a honors program. Now you've heard a lot from me. Let's hear from some of our students. I'm glad I came to data because you can be a math wizard or a good designer and data teaches all of that. I'm really glad I became a part of the Academy, not just because of technology, but because of the great moments you share here. Last year I got to run an app and run it on my own phone. I came to this program because I want to be a programmer, and it seemed like the right fit for me. I like data because when I graduate, I can go to high school as a data program. The teachers here will never give up on you, no matter what. Data is a place where you can bond with a lot of people with the same interests as you creating many friendships. When I first came to data, I thought the computer classes would be too hard for me. It turns out they help you a lot, taking you through it all step by step. I love data because of the new friends I made and the learning opportunities I've had. Teachers here really want you to do well and inspire you to follow your dreams. I love this program. In addition to all that, we do offer the Kins After School program. Um, because we are located at a Title I campus, it actually costs a little bit less to attend Kins here at Data. Um, the other nice thing about the Kins program is um, you can utilize the Kins program both here and at your home middle school campus. Now, how does that give you an advantage. Well, let's say normally your student rides the bus. Um, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, they hop on the bus, they get off on their shuttle bus, and they can go to the KINS program at their home middle school campus. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, they have an after-school club 
or they're involved in another one of our activities, after they're done with that activity, they can report to the KINS office here and attend KINS here until you are able to pick them up. We also have a dress code. Um, students can wear uh, any data design shirt, any color, uh, with blue jean or khaki pants, shorts, or skirts. We have other recruiting events coming up. We have three more YouTube live events, one on October 29th, one on December 2nd, and one on December 9th. Uh, that's found right here at our YouTube channel. We will also have two in-person recruiting events um, from 6 to 8 p.m. On November 10th, it's for students with last names A through L. And on November 12th, students with last names M through Z. That will be held at the new Center for Cybersecurity and Innovation, which right now is a big empty warehouse, uh, at 3175 Nacogdoches Road. Uh, if you have any questions, you can call the data office at 210-356-5981 or pop me an email and you'll get my email at the end of this video. Couple of things to remember as we close out. Last year we accepted 150 students out of over 600 applications. Uh, it's just like a regular lottery. You can't win if you don't apply. So even if you're on, a f on the fence, I would encourage you to put your application in. You can always turn it down, but every year inevitably we will get calls after the lottery saying I really want my student to come in and while they can still apply, they go to the bottom of the wait list. We review star scores because we won't have your fifth grade scores yet. And we will continue accepting students from the waiting list after the lottery date and, and through the new school year until every slot is filled. We also have an open house here at Data Ed White on January 14th, 2021. Um, from uh, 5.30 to 7.30, and you'll get another email and phone call from me about that when it approaches. Uh, application deadline is February the 12th. That's the date that the applications actually close. Any application submitted before then will be considered for the lottery, and notifications will be sent by all of the magnet programs on the same date, on February 19th. If you're undecided, um, we talked about shadowing days. Keep an eye on our webpage for further details. So that's www.neisd.net backslash data MS. And so now I'm uh, gonna take some questions. I know that you all have probably been asking questions in the chat and we'll take some time to do that now. <clears throat> Uh, oh, well, thank you, everybody, uh, for what, sitting through our presentation tonight. There were a couple of questions that came through on the stream that I thought would benefit answering from for everyone. Uh, one of them was about GT, about GT classes. There is GT testing across the district at the end of fifth grade. Uh, the district then gives all of the campuses a master list of GT students. And we do schedule students into their own GT sections when they get to us over here at, at the Design and Technology Academy. So um, we don't, we try to keep our GT sections uh, pure, meaning that they're, all of the GT kids are together in one class um, so that we can give them what they need as uh, they matriculate through our program. Uh, another question a parent had is, is it too late for a student to join in eighth grade or in seventh grade? Um, no, it's never too late. We bring students in as seats open. Our teachers are very used to bringing in students from other schools and other programs. They do a great job at making sure they catch kids up very quickly. Our students don't have any trouble um, kind of coming into the data system and learning what it is to be a member of the data family. 
Uh, in fact, it makes things kind of fun and exciting because uh, those students really understand and explain to others the differences between being at a traditional campus and coming into the data program. Here's what I would also encourage you to do if you are one of those parents who's considering coming in. Get, get your application in right away and then give me a call at the office and we will talk about whether or not there may be an opening right now for you to transfer over. Uh, considerations for ESL and dual language learners and also I'm going to throw in there for our special ed learners. Um, we don't we purposefully don't ask those kinds of questions on the application because we don't want there to be any perception that any favoritism or any barrier is given to any student in our district. We want our program to be a good fit for everyone. So we'll have those discussions if that student is chosen through the lottery on whether or not it is a good fit for you. Um, so there are still opportunities. Students can still take Spanish when they get here. Um, we offer all the way up to uh, the high school level Spanish uh, here at Data Ed White and uh, through their other elective class that they are able to take each year. Um, there is plenty of help for students who whose parents aren't um, aren't as tech savvy as their students. And let's face it, mom and dad, um, the reality is all of our students, they're digital natives. Um, we are all uh, parents and teachers alike, digital immigrants in this digital world. Um, our students, um, come to us with a different set of knowledge than we had when we entered those grade levels. Uh, the reality is, um, when I took a computer science class in high school, I took it on a green dot matrix screen where getting the computer to boot up and run a simple program, I was jumping off of my seat so excited. Our students don't know a world without Windows. And so um, we can get them caught up and we provide all of the support that they need to be successful here. You don't have to know anything. In fact, as the director of a digital academy, I will tell you it's my job to make sure students know I am not the most tech savvy person there is out there. It's about getting the students to where they need to be. A uh, question about um, data siblings. Our data siblings get what we call preferred seating. Um, they still have to meet all of the criteria for getting into data, but we do want to keep families together. So they get pulled in the lottery uh, before the rest of the students do because they do get preferential seating. Um, let me read the next one. The expectations for the grade average, the, the 85 average, if they fall just a little short, we will take that into consideration. We have to establish the norms and we pull those kids first. But remember, we don't pull those grades until semester. And so it's mom and dad, here's a good motivation for you between now and then. Let's say your kid wants to really come to data. You can kind of dangle that carrot in front of them and tell them, we need to get your overall average up to an 85. Remember what I said in the presentation, they don't have to have an 85 in every class. It's when we average together their math, their science, their social studies, and their language arts, the average of those four courses has to be an 85. So as an example, a student who has a 75 in math, but has an 80 in social studies and a 90 in science and a 95 in English is still going to average out to an 85. It's the overall average that we're talking about. Uh, some questions about our uniform policy. Um, there is uh, a uniform across the campus here at Data Ed White. Um, Ed White proper, our Ed White prop program kids have uh, what 
what is the ed white uniform that is a for sixth graders a blue collared polo shirt with blue jean khaki or uh, uh with blue jean or khaki short skirt or pants but our data kids get to wear a data shirt in any color we sell those here in the office they're 10 bucks a piece most of our data parents buy 10 t-shirts or i'm sorry five t-shirts to last them all week and uh, that's what they wear and you'll have opportunities to buy them on contract signing night if you decide to accept your spot at data um, good question about students looking towards a future that's not necessarily tech driven that is a great question so one of the strengths of our program in developing these skills in technology is that we live in a digital world. And I want you to think of any field out there, medical field, doctors, lawyers, um, police, uh, firemen, name me a field out there where having good knowledge of technology isn't gonna serve them. And you'd be challenged to think of those fields. The skills that our kids learn are transferable wherever they go. And I'm gonna give you a great example that I talked about with the data director at the high school just the other day. Um, we have a data graduate, an alumni from data high school, who is now a neurosurgeon and talks about the fact that the critical thinking skills that he learned in his technology classes the visualization things that he learned in there, the ability to think through a problem and collaborate with others. Those are the things that made him successful in his chosen medical field. So these skills are transferable wherever you go. Um, any out of state test, I know we say star, but I will take, we will take any um, standardized test from anywhere a student went. So let me give you several examples. If a student went to a private school and took the Stanford or the Iowa Test of Basic Skills, the ITBS, we can look at those. I, if, you, they went, if they went to school in New York, we will take the New York Regents. Or if they went to school in Virginia, we will take the Virginia SOL. We will take whatever standardized course they have. GT testing is something different. That's for a program within the program. Uh, our district has different rules for that, uh, but that usually isn't a released test. But I will take whatever standardized course we have and review those for meeting the minimum qualifications for getting in. Uh, there's another question coming in. Uh, the technology that's at the core of our studio is a new tech TriCaster 4K Mini supplemented by an HP Omen laptop for mobile editing. That's what we use here in the program. I guess that was a question that came in. Um, charter students are not evaluated any differently than any ISD students in terms of getting in. Um, they are, I mean, some of our charter schools have a different grading system, but we have lots of experience with evaluating those grades to make sure they meet the minimum. So let's go over what those requirements are. Um, a minimum 85 average of your four subject areas. Um, since there was no STAR test, for this year, we will either look at your third grade star scores, or if you're in district, we'll look at your benchmark scores. Um, we will also uh, look at your discipline. If you're from out of district, I will be calling your current camp, uh, your cur current campus to get a discipline report. Remember, it doesn't mean perfect discipline. If your child, you know, bit someone in kindergarten, I'm not going to keep them out of data because of that. Um, they can apply at the Design and Technology Academy website. 
There is a link on our website that's www.neisd.net backslash data ms. They can also apply at the district website at www.neisd. You can scroll down the page. There's a big button that says uh, 11 magnet programs and two magnet schools. You click on that button and that will take you to a CTE page. All of the magnet programs fall under career and technology education. On that page, you will see a link to a magnet, a common magnet application you can apply there. Um, any other questions coming in? Yes, we do have a robotics program here at uh, uh, Data. It's not offered as a class right now, but we have a very successful robotics team here. Uh, they meet during right now during async time and after school. Uh, we fully expect them to continue with winning us all the nice trophies they've already brought us. It's moderated by two of our technology teachers here, or two of our data teachers, not both of them are technology teachers. I think that that is all of the questions that are asked. Uh, I want to say thank you to everyone for being with us here tonight. Uh, if you have any other questions, be, feel free to email me at F as in Frank, R-U-I-Z at neisd.net. Or you can always call the data office at 210-356-5982. I'm sorry, 81. 210-356-5981. Uh, I will be happy to return your calls and answer any questions that I have. Thank you so much for giving us your time tonight. I know how busy um, everyone is. There's one more question that came in. Uh, HAM is offered, the Hyper Accelerated Math Program is offered uh, in our campus. Um, and we have lots of HAM kids here. Um, a word about, one more word about GT and HAM before we leave. We're a very popular program with both our GT and HAM students. The average number of GT students at a traditional campus is between three and 5% of the population. For our GT students, um, they make up about 35% of our total population here at Data. We have about 400 students and about 35% of them are GT. The same is true uh, for our HAM population. We only have sixth grade HAM this year. Obviously this was the first year with our our ham students coming in, but they make up about, I think there's two sections of ham students. So they make up about probably 20, 25% of our incoming sixth grade class. That seems to be all the questions that we have. Thank you very much. We look forward to uh, welcoming you into our new class. And um, we look forward to answering any other questions that you have. Thanks and have a great night.